Welcome to another video. Let's do another epsilon delta proof for a function that is constant. You see, this is going to be a little tricky. Not tricky. It is harder to prove for a person like me because it is too obvious. I don't have to do any manipulation because it's so obvious that if a function is constant, it doesn't matter where you go on the x-axis, you'll always get the same value. So, if we try to use the definition of a limit, saying that the limit of a function is equal to L as X approaches A, if for all epsilon greater than zero, for all positive values of epsilon, there exists a positive value of delta such that if the difference between or the distance from the point of interest that we have, which is point A, is less than delta, then, or that means that the distance of the function from the limit point is less than epsilon. If we try to apply that here, the problem we're going to have is we will not be able to generate this from the expression. And that might be what brings some headache, but we can make it happen or just explain it. Okay, let's give it a shot. Let's get into the video. So let's give this approach to it. Let's look at a graph. You see, this is the graph. This function, f of x is equal to four, is gonna be our function. One, two, three, four. So we have a function f of x, and it's equal to 4. That means, no matter where you go, it looks like your delta is not going to affect the value of your function because whether you come all the way to the left or you go all the way to the right, your limit is still on that line. The line isn't squiggly, it is not twisted, it is there's nothing, it's just the same line, but it's not even rising or falling, it's horizontal. So if we try to apply this to it, this is what we're going to get. If we do the same proof the way I've said you should do it in the previous videos, this is what you're going to have. We're going to start from the right-hand side, because in this case, let's just list out the things we have. We know our A, so I know that A for this proof is going to be 3. I know that L is 4. And I know f of x equals 4. So let's start from this side to try and see if we can guess a value for delta. So we start our proof. We're going to say f of x minus l is less than epsilon. We're going to try to use this sentence to guess our delta. So we're going to go here and say that we have 4, absolute value of 4 minus, what's our limit? Our limit is 4. Ah, it's less than epsilon. And what does that mean? It means that the absolute value of 0 is less than epsilon. You, you just stop here because there is no x in the picture. So what we have here is 0 is less than epsilon. Remember, typically we need something like x minus 3. We need x minus a. x minus 3 is supposed to be less than or some multiple of x minus 3 is less than epsilon, then we divide both sides. But at this point, we don't have any x. We don't have anything that restricts us. So when we're trying to guess a value of delta, we don't need to guess. Any value we pick is going to work because this sentence is always true. Look at this sentence. This sentence implies that epsilon is greater than 0. Zero is less than epsilon implies epsilon is greater than zero, which brings us back here. For all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero. Now, in finding that delta, we're restricted by whatever we have here. That's why we usually would factor out and divide. But now, we don't have anything to restrict us. Now, let me explain it to you. What I'm about to show you I wouldn't do in a proof, but I just want to make you see what happens. So let's assume, so let, let me finish this. So this 
statement is always true for any value of delta. So any value of delta you pick, it doesn't matter what the number is, you're gonna have the same limit to be true. So whether you are far away from three or you're very close from three, the limit is always gonna be four. Let me show you why that is true. So let's do this. Assuming I wanna manipulate this, see this is zero, but because I wanna show something in relation to x, to the point three, I can write this as the absolute value of zero times x minus three is less than epsilon. This and this are still the same thing. Watch what I do, I'm gonna pull the zero out. This is zero times absolute value of x minus three is less than epsilon. You see that? Now, do not divide by zero, okay? Don't put it in the comments that I divided by zero. But assuming you want to show why you have an unlimited number that any value of delta is going to work, let's guess what our delta is going to be. Well, look at this. This is going to be x minus 3 is less than epsilon divided by zero. What do you get here? This is infinity. So if you want to guess delta, delta is infinitely large or the number of options you have for delta you're not restricted as long as the number is less than infinity you can use it we can't the only number you can't use is infinity itself but any number that is from zero any number that is remember that we said our delta has to be greater than zero so any number greater than zero up to infinity that this is, you have an infinite number of options when you want to choose your delta. That's why this statement is correct. Okay, so with this, you can say you guess delta is infinitely large. This is why I would suggest you stop. This is how you can justify it to yourself. Leave a comment in the comment section. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.